Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a formula we all learn in school. A circle with a radius equal to r has an area that's equal to pi times r squared. But have you ever wondered, where does this formula come from? And how was it possible that ancient civilizations had an understanding of this formula? To dig deeper into this, we have to go into the definition of pi. A circle with a circumference that's equal to c and a diameter that's equal to d, which is equal to 2r, has a constant ratio between its circumference and diameter. This was learned empirically by ancient civilizations. You could imagine they were estimating the length of the circumference to this diameter. Different civilizations came up with different estimates. One of the earliest known estimates was by Archimedes, and his value was approximately 3.14. Aryabhat came up with the approximation of 3.1416. Li Hui came up with the approximation of 3.14159. Very interestingly, these values were so accurate that they were not surpassed for nearly 1,000 years. It turns out this ratio is exactly the approximation of what we call pi. But they themselves didn't use that symbol. That came much later, in approximately the year 1706, when William Jones used the symbol pi to denote exactly the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. So while the ancients were aware of this relationship, they didn't exactly use our notation, and the symbol pi has only been around for about 300 years. So while you might find math class annoying today, think about how cumbersome it was in ancient times without proper notation. In any case, returning to the point, the definition of pi is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter, which is approximately 3.14. Because this is the definition, we can rearrange the equation and we can get that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. And this is equivalent to two times pi times r. And the reason we need to know this is because when you're calculating the area of the circle in all of these derivations, you need to know what the circumference of the circle is. So we're going to end up needing to know that the circumference is equal to two pi r and that's by definition of pi. So now let's go over how the ancients calculated the area of the circle. I'll present three different methods. One method comes from Archimedes, another method from Leonardo da Vinci and Sato Motion, and the final method comes from Rabbi Abraham Bar Hia. So let's get started with Archimedes. So let's say we have a circle. You can inscribe a regular hexagon in the circle and that will approximate the area. But a neat fact about the regular hexagon is we can divide it up into triangles. So let's say this is a side length S. We can divide it up into six different equilateral triangles. So let's calculate the area of a single triangle. Its height will be equal to a length A, which we will call the apothem. This is the distance from the center of this inscribed regular hexagon to this side. So the area of this triangle will be equal to 1 half times its base S times the height A. So 1 half S A. In order to get the area of the entire hexagon, we need to multiply this by 6. So we have 6 multiplied by that area, which can be rewritten as 1 half times 6 S A. But we know in this hexagon, 6 times S will be equal to the perimeter of the hexagon. So we can substitute that this is equal to 1 half times the perimeter times a. And this very formula will actually be true for every single regular polygon. The area will be equal to 1 half times its perimeter times the apothem. Let's do another example with an octagon. We will calculate the area of one of these wedges. There will be eight wedges in total. So again, this particular wedge will have an area of 1 half times s times a. In order to get the area of the entire shape, we need to multiply it by 8. 
This will equivalently be 1 half times 8SA, but 8S is the perimeter of the octagon, so this simplifies to be 1 half times the perimeter times the length of the apothem. So we have that same formula. Now let's increase the number of sides until we have a regular n-gon. Once again, we can divide it up into different wedges. The area of this wedge is equal to 1 half times s times a. For the area of the entire shape, we will have 1 half times the perimeter times a. Now what happens as n goes to infinity? The perimeter of this polygon will approach the circumference of the circle and eventually will be equal to the circumference of the circle. But the circumference of the circle, by definition of pi, is equal to 2 pi r. Furthermore, the length of this apothem will get closer and closer and eventually reach the value of the radius. So a is going to go to r. So substituting those into the formula gives 1 half times c times r. We substitute in that c is equal to 2 pi r. The 1 half and the 2 will cancel, and the r and r will multiply to become r squared. So we get the area of the circle is equal to pi times r squared. Wow! Now here's a method by Leonardo da Vinci and Sato Motion. Begin by partitioning the circle into slices. You can think about it like slicing up a pizza pie. This proof will be similar to Archimedes, except we're going to deal with slices of the pizza and not slices of an inscribed polygon. Now let's rearrange half of the slices and interweave them with the other half of slices. We end up with a shape that looks like a parallelogram. Now what would happen if we increase the number of slices? If we interweave the slices, we end up with a shape that resembles a parallelogram even further. Now we can think about this process in the limiting case. If we have infinitely thin slices and we interweave these slices together of one half of the circle with the other half, we're going to end up with a rectangle. Now this rectangle is exactly made up of slices of the circle. So the rectangle has exactly the same area as the circle. But the great thing is we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. It will be its length times its width. So all we need to do is calculate the dimensions of this rectangle. Clearly, one of the dimensions is the radius of the circle. For the other dimension, we think about its border being exactly half of the slices of the circle. So the other dimension will be half of the circumference. The circumference divided by 2 is equal to pi times r. So we multiply r by pi times r, and that gives the area of the circle is pi r squared. Amazing! A final method comes from Rabbi Abraham Bar Hia Hanasi. Think about the entire area of the circle as being the sum of the areas of concentric rings. Now what would happen if we make a cut and unwrap all of these concentric circles into straight line segments. We end up with a triangular-like shape. Now let's imagine that we increase the number of rings and we do this unwrapping process again. If we were to take the limit as this goes to infinity, we would end up with a perfect triangle. And so this triangle has exactly the same area as the circle. But what's the area of a triangle? It's equal to 1 half its base times its height. The height of this triangle will exactly be the radius of the original circle, and its base will exactly be the circumference, which is 2 pi r. So we take 1 half times 2 pi r times r, and we get the area of the circle is pi r squared. Wow! What's wonderful is this method can actually be made rigorous. Here's a diagram that I've adapted from a paper about this topic. 
you can actually define a mapping between the circle and this triangle in a completely rigorous way. Then you can calculate the Jacobian of this mapping, and then it simplifies all to be equal to one. Finally, the area of the circle will be equal to this double integral, and this all simplifies to be equal to the area of the triangle. And therefore, it is in fact true that this method can be made completely rigorous and stand the test of time. It is truly amazing that the ancients were able to figure out the area of the circle is equal to pi r squared, and it is still a fact that fascinates us to this day. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.